Islam is now electorally important and so a lot of governments are trying to make accommodations with it. British government certainly is. The British government actually came up with the most extraordinary formula a few months ago in which it would refer to terrorism conducted by people who happen to be Muslims as anti-Islamic terrorism. You'll have to work out how they came to that <laughs> formulation but that, that shows the kind of contortions into which they have got in trying to in, 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 in trying to uh, cope with the fact that there is now a very large and growing electoral basis for political Islam in several Western European countries, but, and it grows all the time. But because I already mentioned the word satirical, I will just tell you: if I, if I live in England and, and I cooperate with a lot of people who do live and work there, um, if any such legislation that uh, equates. Um, uh, attacks on religion or religiosity with hate crime or with racism is ever enacted or it will be enforced. I will certainly demand from the Department of Public Prosecutions that the next person who refers to a man who blows up a Shia mosque with its congregation in Iran, um, the person who describes that person as an insurgent, be arrested for Islamophobia. I think that's the very least we can do. For those who deliberately, the only people we know of in the world who deliberately set out to kill Muslim civilians every day and in the most gross way in the, in the most, if you like, it's not a word that's easily in my mouth, but in the most profane and blasphemous manner, at their devotions, on their pilgrimages, in their houses of worship, tearing and, uh, and, and bloodying their, their holy books and their holy places, are the, the Islamist uh, terrorists, the Islamic fascists. Anyone who describes those people with euphemistic words should indeed be indicted and arraigned if this law is to mean anything, for inciting and encouraging and celebrating the hatred and murder of um, religionists. How are they going to like to suck on that, I wonder? Because I'm deadly serious about it. If that's going to be the law, while I campaign for its repeal, and until it's repealed, I'm going to campaign for this application of it. And see how they like a touch of that. So, so um, other than fear in the Islamic uh, case, when we look at this as a broader phenomena, um, what do you think accounts for the double standard in which how we treat criticism of somebody's religious views as opposed to criticism of somebody's philosophical, political um, views outside of the realm where we consider them sacred? Or, um, I'm just looking for a way to draw this into the I still think it, I, I still think it's the fear of being accused of, religion, of, of racial bigotry, okay. which is the ultimate, uh, the ultimate um, thought crime. Uh, if you commit that, then you're, you're obviously flung out of the comity of civilized people, so that's the end. And people are very scared of that. And given the simple truth that large numbers of Muslims in Western countries do come from Asia, it's a very easy accusation to have made against you, and it's one people, one, one people do fear. It's a very easy one to um, defuse, though, that, I think. And incidentally, I don't think racism is a thought crime. Mm -hmm. the, the preaching of racial hatred is, is, is uh, an offense if it's not a crime. Well, hang on, should it, should, 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 it, should it be a criminal offense? That's no, no, but I mean, sure. no, is, and I mean is, you know, I didn't say is an, it should be a criminal offense. I mean, I always, is, I always thought offense, that, the, yeah. that the race relations laws in, in, it's not in, what people in, are thinking. in Britain in the 60s were actually justified because they ended uh, the, 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 the posting of, of notices in, in, in boarding houses saying uh, no blacks and a number of other uh, rather disgraceful things. So I'm, I'm, I'm ambiguous about that, but it, it is... In, in terms of in, in, in terms of how we order our society, is something you cannot do, and it's something you can't think. The fact that you know, the, 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 whether that doesn't to, to call something a thought crime doesn't necessarily dignify it as something which you ought to think. No, indeed, but it's an utterance question. And when I say it's an offence, I mean it's an offence. It's offence to me, not an offence to the law. But it's um, it can have criminal implications with the cyber. But I, generally, I think everything should be both thinkable and sayable. And that, that principle matters more to me than, than the feelings of anyone who might be hurt by any violation of it. But um, it should be noticed that in, again, I'm speaking about the country I know best in Europe, my country of birth, um, the warnings of what was coming by way of 
uh, Islamist intolerance by the way of the importing into Great Britain of uh, communities from the extremely backward and feudal and underdeveloped parts of North Africa and Pakistan. Uh, people who were arranged marriages to cousins down the generations and the terrible consequences such as deformed births of the comfort our second nature. People like Nadim Aslam, for example, who's written this wonderful book about the Yorkshire Muslim community called Maps for Lost Lovers, or Hanif Qureshi, who wrote My Son the, um, my son the Extremist, no, My Son the Terrorist, My Son the Fanatic, My Son the Fanatic, Hanif Qureshi. Um, Monica Ali, the author of Brick Lane, Salman Rushdie, most famously. All of these people were, were telling liberal Westerners, we come from these Muslim populations. We know what they're like. Don't you let them, don't you let them get away with this. And don't you let them guilt trip you into saying the criticism of this is racism. Don't let that happen to you. This is, these, all these people are friends of mine, I'm very proud to count them as such. Very important, and all of them, of course, are free from any uh, religiosity of their own, Islamic or any other kind. I regard the emancipation of people from religion as the main emancipation that the human mind, human society can, can hope to experience, which is my own view. So they're... Um, anyway, in this country, yeah. it's nothing to do with them. I, I think there are... The reason why, say, Lawrence Wright wasn't criticized, Lawrence Wright, Jeremiah Wright wasn't criticized till recently. Al Sharpton can be called in the New York Times, he's always called the civil rights activist. How did he get that to be called that? What has he ever done to get himself called that? Al Sharpton, has he ever done anything with civil rights anyone knows about? Active, yes. Active in pinching himself every morning, and he'll think, I'm going to I'm get, get away with it again by t this time tonight. Four people will have had me on TV and sent me a limo and called me Rev. He can't believe his luck. He, all he proves is in this country, anyone who put the word Reverend in front of their name can get away with that. But that's not just a problem of people being reluctant to criticize racism. It is, unfortunately, a criticism of a great man who was murdered uh, 40 years ago, Sweden, because the, de the decision by almost every white person in America to conclude that what, what the colored folks like is a bit of shout and holler from the pulpit. They like a good preacher when they're talking about political and social and other kinds of freedom. It has been a hugely retrogressive thing. It's meant that the great black socialists and secularists like um, Philip Randolph and Bayard Rustin, the people who actually organized the march on Washington and did the spade work to get it done, and the groundwork, and got the United Automobile Workers to co-sponsor a great contribution from Michigan, incidentally, are written out of the record completely. It's all preacher now, preacher men. So anyone who can call themselves that, who can pose as a religious uh, figure, whether it's Farrakhan or Sharpton or Jackson, these frauds and crooks and big mouths and bigots themselves, for the most part, gets a free pass from white society. So it is partly true, what Peter says, that it's because of race, race guilt tripping, but it's also because of a, a totally exaggerated deference to men of the cloth that's also allowed frauds and crooks like Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell and John Hagee and now the wonderfully named uh, Ron Parsley. Is it Ron or Roger Parsley? Rod, Rod Parsley, a Woodhousian, uh, a new McCain um, evangelical demagogue in the Midwest, to flourish. Whereas it, people, if they People trying similar sorts of bigotry and demagogy without the, the prefix reverend wouldn't have a prayer, quite rightly. Or I mean to say, a chance. <laughs> wouldn't be given the opportunity. Would be right, you know, lying to children for a living is a pretty contemptible way, I think, to go through life. And these guys do it all the time, and they, and they get called reverend into the bargain. Woof. And if, only, if they were only lying to the children, when they rape and torture the children, they're, they're only accused of abusing them. What would anyone be called who did that who wasn't in early orders? Be called a rapist or a torturer. Now it's an abuser. Or an organization. This is a free, pa free pass given to the clerisy. All this should end. The United States should be much prouder of its secular constitution. Yeah, yes. I'm willing to stick up for it. Peter, it looks as if a thought is just on the edge of here. It's staying there. <laughs> Rod Parsley. Oh.